Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting crashing waves breaking on the rocks and I'm going to be inspired by this lovely photograph that I found on Pixabay. I'm going to be mostly using um, negative painting for those crashing waves um, so I'll be painting around them. I'm using Milford paper, it's £140 weight and it's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. I'm going to simplify the photograph first. I'm going to use it as inspiration rather than copying it. So I've just used a long ruler and I've put in a high horizon line. Next, I will sketch in the rough shapes of my rocks. And you can see I'm just being very, very loose and very rough and very simple literally just a couple of lines here and there just to position the rocks across the bottom leaving a gap on the uh, left hand corner because I'm going to be having my sort of churning water meeting the breaking wave there. Next I'm loosely roughing in some sort of a large uh, shape for my breaking wave keeping it sort of fairly uneven I'm going to take it right up to the top of the page um, and that will be the area that for most of the painting I won't touch. I'll leave it white. I will just maybe put a bit of shading in towards the end. But to start with, I'm going to be painting around that area. You can see that I've erased the horizon line inside the wave and that helps me to see where I'm going and see um, to make sure that I don't paint into that area. I'm using my small Ron Ranson Pro Art Harky brush, but you can use any wash brush to carefully wet the sky and the sea area all around the wave shape. So I want to leave the wave shape dry. Just taking my time to make sure that I work around that area and leave that dry area so that when I paint my sky and sea wet in wet, um, I will be able to paint around that area more easily. The paint, any wet paint should stop at the borders of where it is, is wet, but should still softly diffuse in the sea and the sky. This is going to be another limited palette painting. I'm going to use yellow ochre, but you could use raw sienna. And I'm going to use indigo and Payne's grey. And a bit later on for the rocks, I shall add a nice dark brown and you could use sepia or burnt umber. So firstly, this is my yellow ochre and I'm just putting quite a light um, coating of yellow ochre across the sea and the sky area, mostly near the top. Fairly uneven. I'm not too worried about it being uneven. I'm looking for a nice underpainting that's going to be mostly sort of dark grey blue from the indigo and the Payne's grey, which I'm now putting in, um, which will give me a nice base to be able to paint on. Keeping my brush strokes mostly horizontal, you may find it easier to paint on with your board flat for this part. Um, I'm finding my paint is running down quite a lot um, but I can't film flat at the moment, so I'll have to make do with it. Now I'm putting in some stronger paint across my horizon line. First on one side, then I'll do the other. Still trying to leave some yellow ochre showing. Should all softly diffuse. Now the other side. You can see the paint's running down away from my horizon line. Uh, but I can straighten that up, I can tilt my board too to make sure that I get a nice 
reasonably flat edge there. I'm not too worried at the moment because um, I can darken it up later and straighten up the line um, when I paint wet paint onto dry once I've finished the underpainting and that it's completely dry. I'm using quite choppy brush strokes near the bottom um, and that will give me a good start for where the water is churning around the base of the rocks and the breaking wave. Same on that side. Now that's the underpainting virtually done. I'm just going to smooth this side out a little bit more. As I say, I don't mind too much because I can get that horizon line straightened up later. Now I'm going to leave it to dry and then I'll come back once it's completely dry and carry on with the painting. It's all dry and I've got a nicely diffused wash here. So now I'm going to paint my rocks. And for this, it's very important that I use very thick tube consistency paint with just a small amount of water. And I'm mixing up my sepia, indigo and Payne's grey unevenly on my brush, really thick on my three quarter inch flat brush. And I'm using the whole of the brush and the tips to sweep it around following the, the lines outlines of my rocks um, with large quick and bold brush strokes so that I get dry brush randomly here and there very thick paint in other places as I paint I'm dipping into a little bit more water to loosen up some of the very thick paint so I get some softer edges as well so I'm painting very very quickly in my outlines just until I try and sort of build up the look of the rocks that I want making sure that I leave that gap in the bottom left. The faster you can paint an area like this um, I think the better your results. Uh, don't worry if you get too much dry brush because when you've covered the whole area um, in your first layer, you can go back with the flat brush and fill in some of the areas, but leaving the dry brush sparkle across the tops and the edges, not quite the edges, but in certain parts of the rocks, wherever, wherever you like the look of it. And then what I've done off camera is flick in some water with a bristle brush, just to get some nice run backs in that thick paint, which will give me a nice texture. I'm just using a clean, damp squirrel mop to soften the transition between um, the churning water and the rocks there so that I don't get any hard edges where the water is, is, is meeting and covering those rocks just on the edge. Now I'm quite happy with the rocks now. Just need to leave that to dry. The next thing that I'll be doing is starting to finish off the sea towards the horizon where it meets the sky. So I'm mixing up a nice rich mixture of my Payne's Grey and my Indigo, <coughs> excuse me, and using my flat brush, I'm going to carefully put in my horizon line. You'll see it's nice and dark. Then using horizontal strokes, I'm going to bring the C down, leaving little gaps of the underpainting showing through here and there, uh, being careful not to go too far into my breaking wave area, my unpainted paper. Now I've dipped into water so that I have diluted my paint and it's paler as I come down towards the middle or the mid ground behind that breaking wave keeping it nice and soft. Now this is my clean damp squirrel mop and I'm using it just to soften um, those edges between the water and the breaking wave. 
And what's happening there is as I soften, instead of going back and cleaning off my brush, I'm now going to use the paint, the very pale paint that I've picked up just from softening back. I'm going to drop that in and that'll give me a few shadows um, and extra deeper tones in my breaking wave, but without being too dark. This is a scrunched up piece of tissue or kitchen roll and I'm dabbing very gently here and there into the wet paint to soften back that edge even further and it looks like sort of misty sea spray. That's the effect that I'm going for. So now I'm going to paint this side in exactly the same way. trying to sort of keep a certain amount of harmony from one side to the other and then rough brush strokes towards the bottom here um, to start to build up the sort of look of churning water near the bottom and then the clean damp squirrel mop um, and then this softening process again then adding the very pale grey into this side, just randomly of the wave. I need to get that a little bit darker I think so it matches the other side. back in with the tissue and you can see I'm being very gentle. Um, I don't want to take off too much paint. Um, it would look quite quite ugly and strange. I'm just grazing some of the paint off onto the tissue uh, for those kind of very soft sea spray transitions. I'm just going to continue to soften back, maybe a little bit slightly darker paint brought into the breaking wave here and there not too much but just where I think I need I think it needs it um, to add a bit more shape and form and dimension to the wave slightly darker paint I'm just going to dot it in here and there not too much of this but just enough to again just add add that little bit of extra dimension a little bit around the base but I don't want to overdo it because I want a nice contrast between the rocks and the waves and then a few a few bits on this side little tiny drops paint's still damp so you can see it's diffusing nicely so none of those little spots are going to look too harsh but if they do you can just dab out with the tissue again Time to leave it all to dry again. And now that everything's dry, I'm going to use um, a bristle brush that I've chopped the ends off to make it very, very short. Um, and I'm going to use it as a scrubber. So I'm going to dip the bristle brush into um, very clean water and I'm going to scrub any areas 
that look a bit too harsh or hard edged where my breaking wave meets the sky. This is my one of my last jobs to do is just to work on the edge a bit more and soften it off. Leave that clean water on for a little while, then dab out for a few seconds or sometimes just move the paint around a little bit. I mean, I call this a scrubber and it's very hard bristles, but don't scrub too hard. You can be very gentle with this. Um, and because if you scrub too hard, you could damage the paper. So I'm looking to move paint or just to remove paint at the moment. Um, and just improve the look of my, my edges. Just putting in some darker paint with my flat brush in the churning water at the bottom on the left, softening back again where I've added the paint. I think that's the thing, painting something like this, you're constantly adding hard edges, then softening back with soft edges, and you're balancing between the two um, and I think that's what will give you the best effects. So I'm standing back and looking at it and I think there's a little bit too much white just there on the rock so I'm going to fill that in in a couple of places um, I think that looks that looks a lot better so I think I'm going to call this painting finished time for the part I really enjoy which is removing the tape peeling it off pulling it away from the painting so that you don't inadvertently tear if the tape catches which it sometimes does and the chance to see how the painting looks with a clean white border which always gives a much more finished look i think i'm quite pleased with that i think that works quite well um, we've got some nice strong contrast with those dark rocks all that dry brush um, and texturing on the rocks really looks like water sparkling on them and that wave has lots of movement and it's mostly been painted through negative painting we've just gone in and added a bit of shading towards the end could maybe have taken the wave off and softened back into the sky a little bit more but perhaps the next time I paint some breaking waves I'll be able to remember to do that but I'm very very pleased with my rocks um, I shall certainly be painting more rocks like that so I hope that was helpful um, thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already and thanks so much to my lovely patreon group who support this channel I'll see you again soon Take care, stay safe and happy painting. Bye.